festival this weekend, Mount Rainier created a spectacular backdrop for a couple of rare warbirds. One is the Soviet-built MiG-15. The MiG is one of the only five remaining in the free world. It was built for duty during the Korean War, where it was the target of American fighters like the F-86 Sabre, which was also on display. The MiG and the F-86 were the two frontline aircraft that fought in Korea, and uh, there's it's one of those classic battles, you know, like the uh, Sopwith Camel and the Fokker. Uh, they were the primary combatants during the Korean conflict. And just for old time's sake, the MiG and the F-86 staged mock dogfights over Boeing Field to the delight of thousands of flight fans. And still... Those amazing men in their flying machines are in the western Washington skies this weekend. The Emerald City Flight Festival takes place this weekend. And one of the men who flies through the air with the greatest of ease is Paul Entrican, and he joins us here today on the Noon Show. Now, you're not a trapeze artist, Paul. You're actually flying up in a jet, right? That's right. All right. You fly in a Russian MiG-15. Mm -hmm. Where do we get a Russian MiG-15 in this country? There we see in pictures of it now. But it was strictly a civilian venture. Uh, some gentlemen in Chino, California imported five of these airplanes from the Chinese Navy. And the, uh, we've had normalized relations with the Chinese for the last several years. And this is just a, uh, a new version of importing a different product. Now, the MiG jets, I mean, they're, they're famous. We've heard about these things when flying over Vietnam, of course, uh, flying against uh, U.S. Uh, forces over there. Are there secrets that we can learn by, by examining a jet like this when we first got, got one? Well, the U.S. government has had the uh, MiG-15 for several years through defections and other sources. And believe it or not, all the data about the MiG-15 is still classified by the U.S. government. And that's primarily because 13 countries still use the jet as a frontline fighter. Paul, we're going to ask you to pause for just a moment because I believe Jesse Jackson is uh, waiting to speak. Yes, right? Jesse Jackson just appearing in Washington, D.C. Let's go to the live right now. And welcome back. When we last left Paul Entrican, pilot, we were talking about the Emerald City Flight Festival, which takes place this weekend. And Paul, the, one of the very few flyers, at least in the West, who has uh, taken advantage of being able to own and fly a Russian MiG fighter. Tell us how that all came about, Paul. How did you get hold of this airplane? The uh, Combat Jet Museum in Chino, California, imported five of these airplanes from the Chinese Navy as surplus. And I was just fortunate to get the very first one that was uh, licensed in civilian hands. All right. And you'll be flying this in the, uh, in the air show this weekend. What are some of the things this, this jet does? Does it do special things that maybe other jets can't? No, it doesn't do anything particularly special. It's just so unique. It's one of the rare opportunities to see a Soviet fighter fly. Mm -hmm. uh, in a free world, as far as I'm aware, there are probably only a handful that have ever been seen. And uh, this one is particularly special just because it is the first one to be licensed by a civilian in the U.S. And you come along with the jet bedecked in uh, Russian garb <laughs> as well, a, a Russian jumpsuit there. Where, where'd you get the patches? I mean, those are pretty official. Looking. It just all helps to enhance the act quite a bit. It, uh, it adds a little bit of uh, real, realism to the air show. and. Uh, it uh, makes me feel more like a Soviet pilot, too, when I'm flying that airplane. You had a couple of our staff people going a little bit earlier today. Uh, <laughs> Joey Parsons, one of our associate producers, came over during the show and said, I don't know if you're going to be able to talk to him. He's got such a broken Russian accent, and everyone assumed that you were actually a Russian fighter pilot. Now, you're where from Alabama? That's right. I'm from North Alabama. How do you swing a North Alabama accent into a Russian accent? Well, that's that all part of the act, you know, just a little bit of work, and uh, it enhances it just a little bit, and it makes it a lot more fun, too. All right. When you're out there at the air show standing next to your jet and some youngster comes up to you and says, Mommy, is that a Russian pilot? Then what do you say to him in your Russian accent? Well, something to the effect is a uh, real Soviet airplane is not replica aircraft. It's, it's for real. And that always gets their attention. They look at me with big eyes and say, wow, this guy's a bad guy flying a bad guy airplane. You're not a bad guy, however, because you were a Marine Corps pilot for how many years? That's correct. I was in the Marine Corps for 10 years, Semper Fidelis folks, and I uh, loved every minute of it, but the MiG was calling, and uh, it was just an opportunity that I couldn't turn down. Well, it's a great story, and you'll have a chance to see a piece of history, as a matter of fact. A Russian MiG fighter will be on display again this weekend at the Museum of Flight over at Boeing Field, and Paul Entrican will be uh, taking it up and showing uh, what exactly this jet can do. Paul, thanks for joining us today, uh, Russian outfit and all. It's a pleasure to be in Seattle. Enjoy your stay. Thanks, thanks Paul.